today we are going to talk about surface area. First, the definition. Surface area is the area that surrounds or is around a three-dimensional figure. So when we're trying to find surface area, we need to be thinking about the outside faces, the area of all those faces. If you're given a net, such as this one of a rectangular prism, for example, there's two steps that you need to follow. Step number one is to find the area of each surface, or in other words, of each shape that is represented in the net. Step number two is to then add all those areas together. So let's take a look at the rectangular prism that has been provided in example one. It consists of six different rectangles, all different sizes, but we must find the area of each one according to step one. So this top rectangle is a two by five, which is 10 centimeters squared. The one below that is a two by 10, which is 20 centimeters squared. And the one below that is a two by five, again, opposite of the previous two by five, making 10 centimeters squared for the area. Now, since this side is five centimeters, Remember, opposite sides are congruent in a rectangle, so this is also 5. So when we fold the net, the remaining side here is also 5 centimeters. So that means that this rectangle is a 5 by 10, which is 50 centimeters squared. Beside that is a 2 by 10, which is 20 centimeters squared. And lastly, another 5 by 10, which we already know is 50 centimeter squared. Step two is to add all those areas up. So we have a 50 centimeter squared and another 50 centimeter squared. Those two, cancel those out. Next I'm going to go to my two 20s, 20 centimeter squared and the side opposite of that would be the other 20 centimeter squared leaving me with my two tens, 10 centimeters squared plus the last 10 centimeters squared. So if we add all those areas up, all six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, we would get a total of 160 centimeters squared for our surface area, according to the net. Now, it won't always be that easy. Sometimes they'll ask you to find surface area and you are not provided a net. You might just be given the three-dimensional figure, like this square pyramid. The steps, though, are still the same. You're to find the area of each face and then add the areas together. It's just that the net hasn't been drawn. So if you would like, you could stop and draw the net before you begin the steps. Or you can just visualize it in your head. I'm just going to go ahead and find the area of each face without the net. I know this is a square pyramid, so the bottom is a square, so 4 by 4, which means the area of the square is 16, of course, inches squared. Now, this is a pyramid, which means the lateral faces are triangles. We've talked about how to find area of a triangle, so we should be familiar with that. So if you look at this triangle, the base is 4, the height is 10, we will divide that 40 by 2 to get 20 inches squared. Now remember, this is a square pyramid, which means the other three remaining triangles have the same base and the same height. So the other three lateral faces would also have an area of 20 inches squared. So that's step one four lateral faces and my base. Step two, add the areas together. We have four 20s, which is 80, plus the 16 to get 96 inches squared for the total surface area of this square pyramid. Now, another way they may ask you to work with surface areas by giving you a word problem. Here's one for example. Sam is gift wrapping his Mother's Day gift in a box that is three feet long, two feet wide, four feet tall. How much wrapping paper will Sam need to cover the box? The fact that he is covering the box lets us know that we're trying to find surface area, the outside faces together. Now, I have come up with
up with a, a, a method that I like to call the smiley method. Some students prefer that. What that means is that you're going to read the word problem and you draw out the dimensions. We have the five feet for the length, the two feet for the width, and the four feet for the height. And what the smiley method does is that you multiply those dimensions in a smiley face motion. Um, but it is important to remember that in a rectangular prism, opposite sides are um, congruent. And again, the smiley face method only works for rectangular prisms. Okay? So here's a box, a rectangular prism. We have the length, the width, the height. First going to create my first little eyebrow. We have a three by two, which is six. And remember, opposite sides are congruent. So if one side is six, there's another side on that box that's also six. Then we're going to do the other eyebrow. It's a two to the four, two by four, which is eight. And if one side is eight, there's another side, congruent, opposite side that is congruent to the eight. And then lastly, we're going to multiply in our smile motion, three and the four. So what we have is 12, and remember opposite sides are congruent. So if one side is 12, there's another face that also has an area of 12. Now what you would do is add up all the faces together, and you will see that this rectangular prism has a surface area of 52 feet squared.